At this point in the video series on how to uh, make a river charcuterie board from A to Z, we're at the point where we are going to apply a seal coat to the live edges of the board. So far in the series, we've covered the following things. In the first video, I covered the whole process just as an overview, and now I'm going through each of those steps in detail. The next video was how to measure and cut your live edge slab so that it fits properly in the mold. So the third video, which was the last one, was how to uh, calculate the average width of the channel for your river. That's going to be used in a little bit when we calculate the epoxy needed to uh, pour the river. In this video, I'm going to go over the process of applying a seal coat. And I use a process that is different than uh, most videos I've watched and others I've talked to. It's a little more extensive. And you may not want to go that far, but I'm going to share with you the process I use and why I use it. In most cases, people apply a seal coat on the live edges of the slab in the river area to primarily prevent bubble generation and color absorption of the colored epoxy that you're going to pour into the sides of the board. I do it slightly different in that I seal coat the entire top of the board and the entire bottom of the board based on my own experience. And what I'm trying to do is prevent any color bleed into the top of the board from overpour or into the bottom of the board as the colored epoxy seeps underneath. If it gets into the board too much, then the amount of surfacing that you need to do may increase, meaning you're going to make the board thinner. At least that's my rationale. You can either buy into it or not. It's up to you. As a minimum, I would seal coat the edges of the board, just the live edges. That's the minimum. I didn't do it once, and I was sorry I didn't because I had bubble generation going on, and those are always hard to deal with. With that, let's go ahead and get into the process, and let me show you how it's done. It's pretty quick, it's pretty straightforward, and it's pretty easy. Oh, at this point in the process, I'm not worried about everything being perfectly level, although I know this table and stuff is pretty darn close. I only have to put a few shims in it when I actually lay things out, but that's not critical at this point. What's critical at this point is to have everything ready. So the tools I'm going to have ready are acetone, if needed, for quick cleanup, but normally I won't use that. I have these wipes ready to wipe my hands down and other things as necessary, which I will need to do at the end. So I'm going to pull one out right now. Normally I would worry about that because they'll get dry, but this won't take very long and these stay pretty moist. These are baby wipes on steroids, I like to say. And then I have either top coat or some other similar type of epoxy. You can actually use art epoxy if it's the kind that dries in 24 hours. I'm going to be using Moss LV epoxy because I want to get this seal coat to seal up pretty quickly. And then after that's dry, I'll go ahead and scuff it up and I'll pour the actual epoxy that I'm going to use for this board. These metering pumps aren't working quite right for me, so I'll make sure I check by volume. I'm going to mix up three ounces of epoxy. I have my boards. I wanted to point out a couple things. If you look, you can see some worm holes here and other little cracks and stuff. And so when I pour the epoxy, I'm going to let it soak in a little bit to get those filled up, even though we're going to overflow the epoxy past this area. But up here in the top, I'm going to try to let the epoxy get into those holes so that I don't have to deal with them later. You can see some over here also. So be looking at the top of your board and the bottom of your board to see what you may need to deal with later. So that's the top. On the bottom, you can see there are several worm holes. So I'm going to try to let it soak in there a little bit. And over here, you can see there's some damage. So I'm going to try to let it soak in there. So I'm going to do those first, and then I'll turn it over and get the rest of the board, including the river. The other thing I wanted to point out is I have a board here covered with Tyvek. 
it is uh, resin resistant. So that helps me clean up spills and stuff later. So we'll get back this epoxy over here because I'll be pouring the epoxy over this Tyvek. I'm going to pour three ounces. That's not very much, so I'm not going to bother to put on the respirator. So I do want to put on my glass because I don't want it to accidentally splash in my eyes. And you see I've got my gloves on. Mix ratio is two parts resin to one part hardener. This is the resin, Moss LV, so I'm going to put two ounces in here, and then I'll put one ounce of hardener. That looks pretty good. Seven should be just right then. Seven. So it looks like the metering pumps did okay this time. They're right where I would have expected it. And so we can now mix this epoxy up. Let me just take about two to three minutes of stirring. And you want to make sure that you've got like a equal blend across. Depending on the epoxy, it could be crystal clear or like in this case, it's kind of a cloudy amber, I would say, which is closer to the color of the hardener. The epoxy was nice and clear, but the hardener was a little amber, for lack of a better term. And I'm going to be using a chip brush. It's an old one that I've used a couple times. It's still kind of stiff a little bit. Trying to pour enough to let it soak in. I'm not worried about it going through the board since it's going to be in this form. Okay, you can see I've poured a little bit on top of all of those holes. That looks like it might have a little bark in it that I didn't see. So I'm going to clean that up a little bit just to make sure. I didn't see that before. Get that bark out of there. Now, in reality, this is all stuff we can take care of after the river's poured, but it's easier if we can take if we take care of it now. I'll let that sit there for about three minutes or so to help it flow a little bit. I'm actually going to put a little heat on it, which the heat is not to actually pop bubbles, but to ensure the epoxy is thin enough to go down into those cracks. I want them to fill if possible. And you can see bubbles coming up out of this one here, which means there's still flow going on there. So now I'm going to go ahead and brush this side. And uh, that's not necessarily normal for all people. But I like to protect this in case when the color is going to get underneath, which it will. I want to protect this uh, walnut from getting stained with the color of the epoxy. Now, the one danger of doing it the way I did without letting this dry completely is that I'll have to refill those voids later. Because when I flip this thing over, there's a good chance that those bigger voids will come will get undone again, and we'll watch for that. So what you see me doing is spreading the epoxy over the whole underside of the board, and then I'm spreading epoxy on the edges of the board. Once again, I'm just trying to avoid color bleed from the color poured epoxy that I'm going to put in.
Now I'm seal coating the uh, river part itself. So now one other advantage of putting a full coat of epoxy on the bottom is when you start to pour your epoxy as your wood wants to float. And we'll put some blocks on there to make sure it doesn't do it. But by doing it this way, the other thing it does is it keeps the wood kind of adhered to the form. Remember, we put mold release, so it'll break apart pretty easily, but it takes a little force to break it apart. So this also helps with the wood from floating up when you pour. So now the next step is to let this top coat dry. With this epoxy, it'll probably be dry in about five or six hours, maybe less. With other epoxy, it could take up to 24 hours to dry. So that's one of the advantages of using this epoxy. And once again, I'm going to pour some epoxy in these little bug holes right in them to let them soak in because they go way down into the wood. I'll put my toothpick in there to try to prime it, so to speak, the hole to get the epoxy to run in there. Now we'll let it sit. And I have a choice. Do I want to try to clean this brush up so that I can use it again or not? So I'm going to go ahead and Put it in some acetone, which will allow me to clean it. After I clean it, we'll see whether there's enough brush to, left to actually use again. Might as well be conservative. This I'll just let harden in the cup. And this stick I'll let harden. And I'll be able to use it again. I'm using the cloth to wipe up. The container, looking for drips, wiping those up, wiping my hands off. That's all there is to it. As I just mentioned, that's all there is to the process. It's pretty straightforward, and you can either just seal coat the live edges like I said at the beginning of the video, or you can seal coat the top and bottom like I do. I started using that process a little while ago and I'll continue to do so just because I want to reduce the risk of actually getting color bleed into the uh, bottom of the board and the top of the board. And I also like the way it holds the board down as I mentioned in the video. If you're watching this video series, I hope you are picking up a thing or two even if you've already made river charcuterie boards, I hope I'm providing some uh, tips here and there that might make your process more effective or more efficient. And if you've never created a river charcuterie board, I hope you're getting confidence and excited about the possibility of making your own. They really are beautiful and they're fun to make. They're not that difficult and working with epoxy can be intimidating. So that's the purpose of this series is to put uh, anybody that wants to on an even playing field so they can go out and successfully make their first river charcuterie board. If you like what I'm putting out and you think I deserve it, a thumbs up and a comment will always help get the channel more viewers. I appreciate you taking the time to do that if you are willing. The other thing is, if you uh, like the material that I'm putting out relative to this series, you may want to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified of future videos. And I'll be wrapping up this series. The goal is to wrap it up in the next week. I have about three more videos to put out, and I'm close to having those done. If all goes well, I'll have those out in the next week, no longer than a week and a half from now. I appreciate you taking the time to watch my video, and until we meet in this medium again, or in person, hope you're having a great day, and hope you're making time to go out in the shop and do some cool things. Thank you.